shame. Shame on the Ottoman Empire. Mustafa Sobri says two thirds of Ottoman history was defending other Muslims, defending other Muslims. Two thirds of their history. Shame on the Ottoman Empire. Shame, shame, shame on the Ottoman Empire. At that same time, within the world of Islam, the Antichrist created the Ottoman Empire to rule the world of Islam for him and to do his dirty work for him. And so, it was not an Ottoman Islamic Empire. It was an Ottoman Empire created by Dajjal, the Antichrist, to do his dirty work for him. And the first stage of that dirty work was unjust war. His name was Osman Bey. I don't think he realized that he was setting up such a fantastic dynasty, a dynasty that was to rule the crucial link between three continents. The followers of Osman became known as Ottomans. They considered themselves warriors for the faith, or Ghazis, whose destiny was to bring Islam to the world. The Ottomans wanted to be the future, and they had all sorts of reasons in terms of power, military power. They were fantastic. When they would defeat the Christian people, they would enslave Christian women. This is a very different view of Ottoman rule in this part of the world, isn't it? I mean, traditionally, the Ottomans were just slash and burn sort of uh, people who came through. You know, it's very hard to look at this infrastructure and think about the Ottomans just as some kind of semi-Mongol type horde that's just interested in slaves and money and, you know, they were, they were interested in establishing normalcy as quickly as possible. The Ottomans added salt to the wounds when they conquered the capital city of Rome of Eastern Christian Orthodox Constantinople. For the Muslim world, any great Islamic empire aspired to extend its rule over Byzantium, in a sense to prove the superiority of Islam over Christianity. After centuries of failed Muslim attempts on Constantinople, it took Mehmed just 54 days to breach the city walls. This was, in many ways, the greatest moment in Islamic history since the prophetic message. It had always been the dream, since the beginning of Islam, that it become a Muslim city, and it never had. And suddenly, this brash 21-year-old does what no other Muslim ruler had ever been able to do, and it certainly gave the Ottomans immense prestige in the Muslim world. In the Christian world, it was the end of Byzantium. It was the downfall of Eastern Christian. He needed the builders. He needed the whole organization. So there's an extraordinary revival of the city with the Christian population. Jews are coming from Europe to live freely and do their trades. For the Ottomans. He was not a ruler who said, mine is an Islamic empire and Christians shall have no place in it. Rather, what he said was, we need these people, they have skills, they have resources, and we need them in our city. Mehmed obviously wanted Constantinople to be seen as the center of the civilized world. He wanted to revive it. He did. He succeeded. It was brilliant. <laughs> Nobody in the history, you look at, this is the longest ruling family in human history that we know of. No other family ruled longer than them. How did they break all those historical uh, uh, sunnah? How did they do it for so long? In the 16th century, they were already talking about Ottomans would be over soon. In Europe, can't last much longer, just 400 years, right? Seriously, look, but my mother was alive and there was a sultan, a khalifa of the Muslims. It wasn't that long ago. So, you know, the Nasr, in terms of Allah, you can 
give victory to God, God will give victory to you. We have all these Muslims. I mean, if you look at what happened in, in the Ottoman lands that were defended, uh, uh, Mustafa al says two thirds of Ottoman history was defending other Muslims. Two thirds of their history. And then when the breakdown happens, they're betrayed by all these people. And now the Muslims are suffering from the effects of those betrayals. Nobody wants to deal with this fact. It's painful. <laughs> Sultan Abdul Hamid wouldn't give up Palestine. He was offered all the Ottoman debts would have been forgiven. And he, the famous letter, everybody knows about this stuff. He said, I, I can't give up. It's not mine to give. You can't sell something. It's a sacred trust. But people there will promise, oh, we'll give you uh, your own country, get rid of these horrible Turks, right? Beware of white man speaks with forked tongue. By 1919, the Ottoman Empire was in shambles, falling apart. And a British army under General Annenby attacked the Turkish garrison which was defending Jerusalem, defeated it. The Ottomans waged unjust war on Orthodox Christians. They never waged war on Western Christians. They never wage war on Britain. They never wage war on France. No. 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 When the Ottoman Empire is collapsing and it is losing all its non-Turkish possessions, all the Arab parts of the Ottoman Empire are falling away. The Greek army now invades the Turkish mainland, Anatolia. Because the Greeks hate them with a PhD in hatred. With a PhD in hatred. With a PhD in hatred. As a consequence of which Greece now hates Islam. The Greek people have hatred in their hearts for Islam. With a PhD in hatred. And from this emerge now the Turkish Republic, which replaces the Ottoman Islamic State. The Ottoman Islamic State. The Ottoman Islamic State. Is it the conduct of the Ottoman so-called Islamic Empire? So-called Islamic Empire. So-called Islamic Empire was not representative of the of the Quran and of the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. was no shame, shame, shame on the Ottoman Empire in using the woman as the milk is yummy.